Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other health care practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it's a renewing system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or skin health, uh, skin health issues that you or a loved one may be dealing with, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. That's 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and purchase products right off the website. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. If you're interested in some high-end premium skin health products, you want to know about our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, oil, water, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. 100% active and functional ingredients in all my Truth Skin Health products. And if you want to check out our Bone Broth Protein, head over to brightsidehealth.com. Brightsidehealth.com, Bone Broth Protein is a unusual source of powder protein. I don't know of any other powder protein that's made from bone broth. Bone broth protein is made with glucosamine and chondroitin and hyaluronic acid, all very important for connective tissue and all very skin friendly. Bone broth protein is a beauty protein. It's a skin health protein in addition to being important for joints and other other manifestations of connective tissue in the body. And of course, you'll also get wonderful amino acids that you get from all proteins. Bone broth protein at brightsidehealth.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Last we spoke, we were talking about fat phobia, the recent history of fat phobia, which really got going. Well, it really began the theory that fat, the idea that fat might be a health problem, really got going when a physician named Ansel Keys came up with the lipid, uh, the lipid hypothesis of, of heart disease. He noticed that there seemed to be some kind of a relationship between fat and heart disease. He actually noticed it more, right after World War II when he saw that there was a relationship between the lack of food in the European countries. They were going through uh, food problems after World War II. And uh, Dr. Keyes noticed that they were suffering with less heart disease. The less food they ate, the less heart disease they had. And he did some studying and some research. And he, um, somehow or another, he came up with the conclusion that there was a link between fat ingestion and cholesterol and heart attacks. Quick cut to 20 years later, heart disease is becoming a real scourge as it is today. The federal government got involved. Uh, 1976, Senator George McGovern held hearings in the Senate, so-called Senate Select Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs. Now, we've got to remember, this is the 1970s. And while that may not sound all that long ago, at least it doesn't sound that long ago to me, in terms of our understandings of diet and nutrition from a medical and clinical and therapeutic perspective, it was really the Stone Age. It may have only been 40 or 50 years ago, but... Really, we didn't have any idea that there was a a firm connection between diet and health. Heart disease rates were skyrocketing. Cancer rates were skyrocketing. But there weren't any health food stores. 
Nobody had any idea about supplementation in 1976. If you supplement in 1976, you were firmly in the realm of being a health nut. It hasn't changed all that much today. It's changed a little bit, but back then it was, nobody knew about supplementation. Nobody went to health food stores. Nobody knew about exercises. There, there wasn't any joggers and there wasn't any whole foods and there, weren't any, there wasn't any longevity. And really people had no idea about the importance of nutrition and supplementation and diet when it came to health. People still thought Cheerios were good food. People still thought you're supposed to eat meat three times a day. If vitamins themselves had only been discovered 40 or 50 years before, but we really didn't even know what vitamins were until 1920 or so. And at the time, 1976, when the McGovern Committee met, animal fat intake from, from poultry and red meat and dairy foods was at an all-time high, and so was the death rate from heart disease and strokes. And the McGovern Report, or the McGovern Committee, concluded, and this was a revolutionary idea at the time, this was really radical, but uh, what they concluded was that our diets were killing us. And this really shook things up. It especially shook things up for the food industry. This is 1976, 1977. And, and while today, you know, we, have, we just take it for granted that food can have a huge impact on our health or the lack thereof, back then this was a crazy idea. The McGovern Committee concluded, quote, this is a quote directly from their report. There is a great deal of evidence and it continues to accumulate, which strongly implicates that um, the major causes of death and disability in the United States are related to the diet we eat, unquote. And those major causes of death include, quote, coronary artery disease, which accounts for nearly half of the, death in the, half of the deaths in the United States, several uh, cancers, hypertension, diabetes, and obesity, as well as chronic diseases, unquote. Now, we take this for granted today, but in 1977, nobody knew about this stuff, and it really shook things up. The upshot of the hearing, they, had, they came up with these dietary goals that Americans were supposed to eat less sugar, less meat, less fat, less salt, more fruit, more cereal products, more grain products, especially whole grain cereals, and more starches. This is what the McGovern Committee concluded, that we should be eating more starches, more cereals, less salt, less fat, less meat, less sugar. These are all things we believe are true today. And it came out of the 1970s, started anyway, in the mainstream mind, mainstream mindset in the mid-1970s. Initially, the, foods, the, the food industry was not very happy. The Ameri American Medical Association wasn't happy either. They thought they resented government intrusion uh, into uh, their monopoly or their hegemony over patients' health. They didn't like the idea that the government was telling doctors what patients were supposed to be eating. The food industry didn't like it either. The food industry didn't want to change the way they, they presented foods. And uh, the next year, the initial conclusions were in 1976. The next year, 1977, a new, a new set of conclusions uh, came out. And, of course, it was watered down because of all the lobbying interests. But none of it really mattered because the government never did anything anyway. These were dietary goals that the committee uh, set up. But the government never did anything anyway. The USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, which is the cabinet-level agency that regulates our food and our, our food supply, they never did anything to impl implement the goals. But Nonetheless, the idea was hatched in 1976 in the minds of mainstream Americans that fat was bad, we should all be eating more carbs in the form of grains and fruits and vegetables and less meat and dairy, and that, uh, that notion, that idea has become mainstream conventional wisdom, dietitian wisdom. And for those of us who grew up in the 1970s and the 1980s, well, back then, everyone knew that if you want to be healthy, you got to eat a lot of carbs, you got to eat pasta, you got to eat rice and potatoes, and you got to eat whole grains, and if you're an athlete, you got to do carb loading. You got to make sure you're eating lots of carbs because you get energy from carbs. Everybody knows that. Got to make sure you get tons, of, lots of carbs and not a lot of fat. And ultimately, the food industry got on board too with this whole new interest in grains and carbs because, well, well I'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a quick break and come back with more good health information on The Bright Side right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, skin health questions, formulation questions, or a comment or a success story you'd like to share, 
844-236-6010 it is our number today and every day on the bright side if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program you can head over to brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and if you'd like to check out our bone broth protein jordan rubin's bone broth protein that we're selling on brightsidehealth.com Head over to our website, brightsidehealth.com. You can check out all our Brightside Health products. Hopefully, I'll have some CBD oil up there uh, in the next couple of weeks, next month or so. And I've also got an acne supplement coming out, a truth acne supplement, blemish repair complex. It'll have all the nutrients that I recommend for using, I recommend for uh, dealing with blemish, blemish prone skin or acne skin, including vitamin A and N acetylcysteine. Uh, NAC, vitamin E, chromium, selenium, of course zinc will be in there as well, and we'll be talking about that over the coming days. You can uh, check out all our Truth Skin Health products at truth, uh, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so back to the story of fat phobia, how we got going with uh, being freaked out about fat. All started in, uh, well, started with Ansel Keys in the late 1950s, and then it really got going in the middle of the 1970s with the McGovern Committee. Uh, somewhere around 2000 or so, people started to realize, well, all, this, all these carbs and all this low-fat stuff isn't really helping us any. We still got heart disease, still losing a million people every year. It's still the leading cause of death. Even worse, now we're getting fatter. It took them a few years to realize that this thing wasn't working. Now, the food industry, you got to keep in mind, initially they didn't like the McGovern Committee's recommendation, but after a little bit of time, they, they realized they could make a lot of money on carbs. They had perfected the art of processing flour and, and carbohydrates and getting a lot of profit value out of their carbs. And all of a sudden, you start to see fat-free processed products everywhere, fat-free muffins and fat-free cookies and fat-free candies and fat-free snacks, and everyone just knew if you avoided the butter and ate fat-free... Uh, maybe use fat fee, fat free spreads you'd be healthier for it problem was we weren't healthier for it in fact we were a lot sicker for it somewhere in the early 2000s smart folks were beginning to realize that maybe this high carb thing wasn't all that maybe high carb low fat was a problem and they started to adopt a new way of eating called paleo now, I first read about paleo in the late 1990s because the guy who came up with it is from Colorado, a guy named Lauren Cordain. He's a professor at the uh, University of uh, Colorado State University. He wrote a paper on it, and I read it back in the 1990s, late 1990s, and I found it quite compelling. It made a lot of sense to me. He said, hey, there is, a, there is a way that the body grew up over the course of millennia to eat. We grew up to eat a certain way, and our bodies are the pretty much the same bodies that our Paleolithic or our caveman or Stone Age ancestors have, and our Stone Age or Paleolithic ancestors ate meat. They ate a lot of protein. They ate fat, and they didn't eat a lot of starch, and they didn't eat a lot of sweets. And so uh, when I read this thing, I started to experiment with it, and I lost a lot of weight. I started to suggest people use it. It makes perfect sense to me. And so I suggested that people, my, my patients and clients started to eat this way, and everybody benefited from it. High protein, moderate fat. Technically, the paleo diet is high protein, moderate fat, and low carb. And as it turns out, the paleo diet's not all that perfect either. It's certainly better than the low fat way of eating, but paleo has its own problems, specifically in terms of the protein. There's a lot of misunderstandings about protein, which is probably the most important of the macro, the three macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrates. But still, we, there's this idea that you can eat as much protein as you want, and paleo encourages this. Dietary protein that is not used for growth is going to be turned into fat. It's going to be turned into sugar, and then it's going to be turned into fat, and that's a problem. So paleo is not perfect, but it's way better than the high-carb, low-fat way that even today mainstream dietitians are recommending that people use. Mainstream dietitians still to this day recommend that if you're a diabetic that you eat high carb, low fat or that if you're trying to lose weight that you do it high carb, low fat. And this one, this is a perfect example of why you want to be careful about taking advice, health advice from any official institutional government sanctioned licensed healthcare professional conventional wisdom. 
you want to be very, very careful. If somebody's a licensed dietitian or a licensed medical professional, and they're giving you health advice, I'm not saying it's always going to be wrong, but if they're spouting out the conventional wisdom, they almost always will be wrong because conventional wisdom is usually wrong because conventional wisdom is tied into the status quo and to institutions. And it's always going to be the institution versus the individual. This is the way we have, this is the way our culture is built. This is the way our society is built. This is the way, the way our political structure is built. Institutions against the individual. This is the Bright Side Radio program is about the individual. It's about empowering the individual, us. The institution does not want the individual empowered. And this is, there's this always built-in adversarial relationship, and it demonstrates itself in terms of what passes for conventional wisdom, because institutions don't want to change. The object of an institution is to stay the same. Stat, the, the middle part of the word institution means static, stays the same. Institutions stay the same. So they've got to keep the same kind of conventional wisdom going, going on for decades. They can't really change. There's a really cool book that was written in the 1960s called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. And uh, in the book, the guy Thomas Kuhn says that, that uh, it takes a revolution to change scientific conventional wisdom. Otherwise, it's not going to change. In terms of diet and health, we're still stuck in the 1970s with this idea of high, high carb, low fat in terms of institutions, although individuals are certainly begin, beginning to recognize the flaw in, in that thinking, and that's why you have paleo, and that's why you have the ketogenic diet, which is how we started talking about this whole thing, this whole idea of fat phobia and why it's important to understand how to utilize fat correctly. There's so many reasons why fat is important, not just as a source of energy. Do you know body fat is actually a gland that makes hormones? Your body fat makes hormones, and the more body fat you're carrying, the more dangerous it is or, or the more problematic hormone balance is going to be. You're going to throw off hormone, hormone balance with body fat. And if we have elevated amounts of body fat, our hormones are going to be whacked out, and our hormones are our major source of, of, of cell, um, uh, cell, cell, it's the major stimulus to cell activity. Hor uh, hormones turn cells on and off. They are responsible for the actions of cells, and you want your hormones regulated very, very tightly. The more fat you're carrying, the more hormones, particularly female hormones, estrogen, you're going to be making. That's very, very important. For men, it means the more body fat you're carrying, the less manly you will be the less virile you will be, the less secondary male characteristics, and the less, le the less uh, sexual energy you'll have if you're a male. A lot of the reasons why Viagra is such a, a popular item is because so many of us are carrying too much body fat and we're making female hormone, which is anti-libido. If you're having a problem as you grow older, if you're having a problem building muscle, the chances are pretty good you're carrying too much body fat. If you're a woman and you're carrying too much body fat, that creates a whole, a whole different uh, a range of problems, including autoimmune disease. Yes, autoimmune disease affects mostly women. And the more body fat you're carrying, the more estrogen you're making, the more likely you are to be dealing with autoimmunity. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll come back with your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 if you have questions about health. Prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, you want to go to truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, and make sure you take a look at our retinol 5% gel. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, or acne, or uh, just want some general anti-aging, you want to prevent or you want to even reverse wrinkles. Yes, retinol has been shown to reverse wrinkles once they're already there. Now, it's important to keep in mind with the skin that you actually have two sections to the skin. We never think about this when it comes to skin health and how we treat the skin. Unless you're listening to this program, you probably people have no idea that the skin is made up of a dead layer on the surface and then a, a viable or living tissue underneath. In fact, it's actually three layers. There's a, a surface layer that's made up of dead cells. There's a middle layer that's made up of progressively dying cells that are rising up to the top. That's the, called the epidermis. And then underneath is where the action is. 90% of your skin is underneath. And if you're wrinkling, 
and you're experiencing the visible signs of aging, your problem is in the lower level, the so-called dermis. And this is where you need to be. If you're going to reverse wrinkles or, or reverse, anti, uh, reverse the uh, uh, effects of, sk of skin aging, laxity, looseness, wrinkles, dryness, all of that is occurring at the dermal level. And that's why it takes some time to get results from your skin health product. You can't, the dumbest way for us to assess how valuable a skincare product is is to rub it on our skin and say, oh, that feels nice. Anything will feel nice. Butter will feel nice. It doesn't mean it's going to do anything for your skin. Whipped cream will feel nice. If you want to have something done to your skin via topical application of an active ingredient, it has to get down to the dermis, and that takes some time. And it takes a clever formulation as well. It takes a formulation that understands how to leverage what I call transdermal delivery, delivery of actives across through trans the surface of the skin. And this is what our true treatments do. They deliver vitamin C and vitamin A across the surface, trans the surface into the lower levels of the skin. And this is why number one, to get the real good results, it takes about a week or so. And number two, why the results accrue and add up over time with my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. It takes a certain amount of time for the active ingredients to get across the, uh, to travel through the stratum corneum and the, and the epidermis and get to the dermis. And over the course of time, as those active ingredients get into the dermis, you get better and better and better results. And that's especially true with, uh, with uh, uh, wrinkle, anti-wrinkling and anti-aging effects. Also, uh, skin lightening effects, although skin lightening tends to be more on the surface. Now, speaking of skin lightening, Got an uh, article here from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Some skin products contain mercury and pose a threat to your health. That's according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, U.S. FDA. And what are these skin products that contain mercury? They're skin lightening products. According to the FDA, mercury is often found in cosmetics marketed as anti-aging or skin lightening to remove age spots, freckles, blemishes, and wrinkles. Well, yeah, if you're going to try to remove a freckle, you've got to have heavy-duty poison. The best way to lighten your skin, and you're not going to lighten your freckles, you may lighten them slightly, but you're not going to remove your freckles, but you will lighten hyperpigmentation, dark spots. The best way to do it is with retinol. If you go to the doctor, you'll get something called hydroquinone. That's pretty nasty stuff. Not quite as bad as mercury, but it's still pretty nasty. You can use something called salicylic acid to lighten your skin, and that has some nice effects. But by far and away, the all-time best way to keep, uh, lighten hyperpigmentation is with vitamin A in the form of retinol. The second best way is with vitamin C in its fat-soluble form. Vitamin C and vitamin A, of course, give you vitamin benefits. They give you anti-aging benefits in addition to skin lightening benefits. And vitamin A and vitamin C are non-toxic. Now, you're not going to find vitamin A and vitamin C together in very many products, but you will in our Truth Skin Health products. That is our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Check it out at truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Last, uh, before we went to break, we said that if you're carrying body fat, you're throwing off your hormone balance, particularly, particularly your female hormones. That goes for men, too. And so losing body fat is a very, very important part of anti-aging. You don't want to be skin and bones necessarily, but if you're carrying too much body fat, that's going to accelerate the aging and inflammatory and disease process. The degenerative process in general will be, will be accelerated if you're carrying body fat. So losing body fat is very important. As important as fat is, losing body fat is also important. But you see, we have this idea that when we eat fat, we get fat. It doesn't work that way. That's a simplistic notion that you hear from dietitians. Eat fat, get fat. Even, uh, I was just reading Marion Nestle. Marion Nestle is a, uh, is no relation to the Nestle food, or Nestle um, food processing company. Uh, Marion Nestle is a, a food scientist, and in her book, Food Politics, How the Food Industry Influences Nutrition and Health, she mentions that losing fat is the best, or uh, reducing your fat intake is the best way to start losing weight. Well, this is the mainstream dietitian advice. It's not true. Reducing your carbs is the best way to lose weight, and replacing your carbs with more protein and more fat is the way to go. And not to mention, if you do it correctly, you'll get more energy, you'll get more brain health, more heart health, anti-cancer, and uh, if you're an athlete, you'll get better performance as well. That's the ketogenic diet, which we will continue talking about on our next Bright Side episode. 
844-236-6010 is our number. Carl, the Truth Raider, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Carl. What's up, Good buddy? morning, Benjamin. Okay, this week's topic is of interest, acetaminophen hydrochloride. Acetaminophen, huh? Yeah. I call it Tylenol. APAC. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's the pharmaceutical brand name. Acetaminophen, yes, sir. What were you going to tell me about acetaminophen? There's some research and study out there. I don't know if you concur with this or agree or disagree or yes. That what? is true. Yes. That over a long period of time of taking acetaminophen or Tylenol or anything that's generic, that's acetaminophen in, in itself anyway, proves that there are some case case points that there, it creates apathy in somebody's in somebody's uh, chemical and uh, neurological makeup. Did you read uh, an article? It contributes to short-term memory loss you know, over a period. Of there yeah. was an article. I did read an article about um, about some of the mental, um, uh, how it could affect your mental state, long-term chronic Tylenol. There was a study that came out about ten years, well, I don't know, about eight years ago, that showed that uh, acetaminophen had some effects on uh, what they call social pain, chronic loneliness, and uh, uh, just just angst. It had some yes. beneficial effects on that. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes. Uh, I've been in the supplement for 25 plus years. Do you notice it has an effect? Well, yeah. I, I get to say I, I have my periods of up and down mood swings and, and, huh. and uh, a seemingly some type of frustration. Why don't you do a study for us? Why don't you like lay off of it for a little bit, see what happens, and start taking it, and let us know what happens. Okay. See if Would I you do that? that? Well, I do? shall do that. I don't know yeah. if it also has other biological effects causing rashes or irritations and things over It's a drug. Well. You know what? It's a drug. As far as drugs go, it's one of the more benign drugs, but it's a drug. And anytime you're taking a prescription drug, or any drug for that matter, you're putting a burden on your body. Your body's got to work hard to detoxify that drug. It's going to cost that drug nutrients. This is the, the hidden toxicity of pres- the hidden toxicity of medication that we never talk about is this idea that it costs us nutrition. It costs us glutathione. It costs us sulfur. It puts a burden on the liver, and the more drugs we take, the more the, the more of that burden. And it's not going to show up as a side effect, but the, just logic tells you uh, that you'll have that burden. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Uh, Carl, real quick, I want to get to some more calls. Anything else you want to add? Yes, I think it's consistent with uh, the problem with my eye. I should try this, uh, like mm, a three-day yes. uh, study where I wean myself off of it. And see you don't need to wean yourself off of it. You don't need. You don't need to wean my left eye. Hey, Carl, you don't need to wean yourself off of it. Just stop taking the Tylenol or the acetaminophen. Okay. You don't need to wean I'll yourself try off to do that. that. Yeah, just get it, get off of that one. Let me know what happens. Call us back. Yes, I have to do something about that because I have this chronic redness and crusting and things in, you know, the mucus in my left eye all the time. That means your body's trying to expel something. That's a sign that the body's trying to eliminate something. Whenever that happens in the eyes, you know, chronically, the body's trying to eliminate something through the tears. Through the body, will, a very clever system, it's going to try to eliminate when it, when there's toxins that are building up. It's going to try to dump them out. It'll dump them out in the sweat. It'll dump them out in tears. It'll dump them out wherever it can. If you can't dump them out, it will stash it away in your kidneys or in your liver, or in your thyroid or in your pancreas. This is this is the price we pay for toxicity. Uh, so I, I'm looking. I would be. Uh, it sounds to me like your body's trying to eliminate something, Carl, the truth raider. Okay. Should I try okay. something like a silver solution to add to the eye? What can I do? It's I not, it, no, listen to me, bro, bro. It's not yeah. a local problem. It's come, if, it, if it was just a, acute, if it was just happening once, happened once and then went away, then it could be a local problem. But it sounds to me when it's chronic like that, that it's coming from inside. So okay. it's, it's, it's a sign your body's trying to eliminate something. It's not like you're, you're going to kill something. You've got to either stop putting the stuff in that the body's trying to eliminate or help the body detoxify. Use NAC which is the, probably the most important uh, detoxification supplement, bentonite clay or zeolite, algaes, vitamin E, vitamin C. In fact, uh, vitamin E, vitamin C, selenium, and NAC, well, there's a bunch. But those are four very important uh, detoxifying nutrients. I'd be looking at detox and, and eliminating whatever's toxing out your system. And it could, it could very well be the acetaminophen. Okay. All right, buddy. I got to move. Do a three-day study and see, we'll see what the differences are. Good to talk to you, Carl, the Truth Raider. Have a beautiful okay. day. Be All right, man. Bye. All right. Robin in Oklahoma is okay. What is up, Robin? Good morning. 
Uh, well, then I called about six weeks ago, or maybe even less, about hormonal issues, and you gave me suggestions. Of, um, and I have done those, and I'm still uh, experiencing the fatigue. All right. Sleep is sleep is better. I did the the nightly essence and the uh, digestive enzymes. Oh, hang on now, Ron. That's very intriguing. Now you you did the nightly essence and the digestive enzymes, and you found that you're sleeping better. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, actually, well, now, this actually, is a very important clue. This is a very important clue. See, all of this health stuff that we're talking about here, this is like a, a mystery game, a myst, uh, uh, kind of like a mystery, you know? you got, you got to put, find the clues, and you got to make, uh, uh, get inferences or uh, draw data, draw conclusions from the clues. And so here's your clue. This is a major clue for us. What do nightly essence and enzymes do? What, what's their role, just generally, not specifically, well, but generally? Well, the nightly essence is the probiotics. Which but what part of your body do they work on, both of those products? The gut. The gut, okay. So you took ingredients, you took supplements for your gut, and you slept better. So what does that tell you? Well, when you don't sleep, that means the body is in a sign, is in an emergency position. It's in a survival p posture. Do you understand? When, right. when the body feels its survival is at stake, it's not going to let you sleep. This is true for anybody out there dealing with sleep problems. It's a sign that the body is in survival posture. There's an attack that's going on. So when you ha take the nightly essence and the enzymes and your sleep improves, that tells me that that attack had something to do with the gut. You with me? Well, you so this, remember, I don't, well, I'm sure you don't, but I don't have a gallbladder. And you oh, I didn't remember that, but that's perfect. That makes perfect sense. So let's go on. You're on the right track here, okay, if you're, if you're sleeping better. Now, if you still have the fatigue, you're, you're not out of the woods yet. Right. So you're probably still getting something into the blood through the gut. Have you fasted? No. Okay, well, you need to fast because this is, we've got to figure this thing out. You need to fast for two days. Chances are pretty good. When you don't eat, you're going to feel better. If it's indeed true that your uh, fatigue and your symptoms are caused by something getting in through a leaky gut into the blood, which is extremely common, especially if you don't have a gallbladder, uh, then when you fast, you're going to feel better. So I would highly recommend a Swero V cleanse for you or a complete fast. Swero V cleanse is when you do half a bottle of Swero V every hour. The Swero V is another Jordan Rubin product that has uh, fermented whey and electrolytes, and it's an it'll give you some energy while you're doing your fast. If you don't want to do uh, the Swero V, you can do a little lemon juice. But the less you put in there in your system, the better off you'll be. When you start eating again, you want to start eating your favorite food and watch what happens. You with me? The food you love the most or you eat the most. Watch what happens. Chances are good you're going to notice things that you never noticed before. Are you with me, Robin? I'm here. I'm Conti listening. Continue on with your digestive, all the digestive stuff. I assume you're doing the Healthy Start Pack, correct? Oh, I'm, I'm sipping on tangy tangerine good. all day. Good. we got to get to the bottom of the food thing. The fact that the probiotics, the nightly essence, and the enzymes help tells us we're on the right track. So continue, but now you just got to go dig a little deeper. A fast for a couple days or do a swear of cleanse and then start eating and noting your results in the book. Do a food diary and then you're going to start eliminating foods. And stay in touch because we'll work with you and we'll make you a case study and you know, you're a work in progress but you're heading in the right direction. Okay, spell, spell that cleanse. Swero V is spelled S as in Sam U-E-R-O-V-I-V you get that on the Longevity site? Longevity. It might be V-I-E. I always forget that. V-I-V or V-I-E. Swear O-V. Okay. And uh, you get that, uh, yes, off the Longevity site. You can call 866-735-2470. Or you can go to brightsideben.com and get it right off the website. Okay, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Good to talk to you, Robin. Congratulations. You're on the right track. You're doing Thank awesome. You. Thank okay, you. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Michael in Washington. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Yeah, uh, Ben, I talked to you on Dr. Wallach's program. You were a substitute for Dr. Wallach. I, have, okay. I got basically cut off because uh, the, the program was ending. Okay. So it looks like I'm All right, you got us now. Good. You're at the end, though, but, you, but well, we got a couple minutes. Go ahead. What's okay. So anyway, uh, basically, here's the scenario. I have a burden for my daughter. She was diagnosed as bipolar, and they got her on the drugs. Uh, when that happened, uh, I, call, me, I called Dr. Wallach, and he gave the protocol of the heart and brain pack, smart effect, and de-stress caps. And uh, so basically, I continue to try to convince my wife and daughter to take that protocol to the psychiatrist and to wean her off these drugs, and which I've met some resistance from my wife. And so, but anyway... I, I then 
Uh, I want to hear your story, Michael. Brandon Michael, I really want to hear you. Michael. Michael, I want to hear your story, but we're going to run out of time, and I hate to do that yeah. to you. So, so cut to. How can I help you? Let's get to the well, question. Well, doctor, I went to doctor. I researched Doctor Hoffer, and I talked to you about that. Ah, uh, yes, I recall his, that. And his protocol was uh, three thousand uh, uh, heavy doses, uh, three thousand uh, a day, a thousand each of each meal with niacin, and then he has all the other. B complex uh, vitamins too. It's all gr- how can I help so you? I'm how asking can... you what's your protocol for would, okay. be, would be for her. Okay, I mean, the niacin's awesome. I don't know about three thousand milligrams. You're going to have to decide that on your own. That sounds like a lot to me. Uh, you never want to take a bunch of one B vitamin over another. On the other, hand, uh, if you know if you're taking a lot of niacin, you may run up with deficiencies in other B vitamins. So you always want to take the B complex together. Now, when you take a vitamin like niacin in super high doses, you may indeed get medicinal effects, and that might be what Dr. Hoffer achieved, and I know he did high doses of niacin. You're going to have to decide that on your own. Niacin is spectacular, spectacularly important for the brain, and a lot of folks with social anxiety disorder and autism and bipolar disorder benefit. You also want to be using some lithium, uh, lithium orotate, five milligrams a day. Have her sipping on the Beyond... Have her sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine if you can. Make sure she's using essential fatty acids, particularly DHA and EPA from fish oil. Zinc is also important. I'd be doing 50 milligrams of zinc a day. Everybody benefits from zinc. And then uh, uh, MSM sulfur might help you as well. And there's also something called SAM-E, which she might find beneficial. Uh, Also, keeping the body uh, blood sugar stable is important for all bipolar issues. Bipolar is an up and a down, and when your blood sugar goes up and down, so will your emotions. So you got to keep your blood sugar stable. The best way to do that is with more protein. Uh, Whey protein can have a relaxing effect, so you might want to try whey protein if she can handle it uh, handle it uh, from a digestive system perspective. But more protein, more coconut oil, and less insulin spiking foods. Foods that will throw off her blood. Blood sugar. Interestingly, the niacin and, and the zinc, which are both important for mental health and brain health, they'll also help her with her uh, help her uh, keep her blood sugar stabilized. So many more things, but that's a great start for you, Michael. Thanks for your call. And I'm sorry we have to cut you off here on this program as well. But uh, we only get an hour on the dead doctor uh, on the uh, on the bright side and on the dead doctors don't lie program. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. On Monday, we'll continue talking about the ketogenic diet. Specifically, we'll get into di- uh, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, for, for the ketogenic diet, as well as for weight loss and also for anti-cancer. Check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com, our bone broth protein at brightsidehealth.com, and all our longevity products at brightsideben.com. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular, awesome day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.